Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're dialing in from. Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Please remember to like, subscribe and share if you find this content helpful. Okay, welcome brother Asaf, Michael, Sandra, good to see you all. We are talking about monuments. Let's take a minute to compile our notes and harmonize our thoughts. And let's hear what you're thinking about that. All right, Royal Daughter, kick us off. This is a hot topic coming in hot today. <laughs> this is a hot topic. But, you know, there's so much cultural value in here. We're talking of a people and a culture. And that's, that's what resounds most to me. You know, in the scriptures, in... um. First Kings 7.21 and Chronicles 3.17, um, it says, and it's talking about when the temple was completed. It says, and he set up the pillars in the porch of the temple, and he set up the right pillar and called the name, therefore, Jaquin, and he set up the left pillar and he called the name, thereof Boaz. So uh, we're talking about memorials. We're talking about the same topic that this was part of our culture, how our people memorialized everybody that was important to them and everything. And, and, and it is true. It tells the story. And that's what's so important because, you know, um, when you make a memorial hundreds of years from now, your children can ask, well, what is this about? And you can tell the story because of the memorial that's there. That, and the story gets passed down because of the memorial. And that's what we ought to remember. You know, in the scriptures, it talks about how you should speak to your children, tell them, you know, teach them the scriptures that they will never forget. And 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 that's so cultural for us. We pass down stories, you know, and, and then in the West, we call them griots or storytellers or but that is a cultural thing. In um. Uh, Genesis 35, 7, it talks about an altar that Jacob built. Jacob built an altar in, to remember. Um, it says, and, and he built there an altar and called the place Bethel because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. In Genesis 12, 8, Abraham built an altar. And we see this trend going right through our bloodline. And the last one I want to talk about for now is um, Isaiah 59, 19. When the Most High says, So... They shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall set up a standard against him. And that's a memorial. That's an altar. So he says, so that the fear of the most high, those from the West and those from the East, those that messed with you all these hundreds of years, they will never forget what the Most High is, is going to do to them because of, the, of their wickedness against my children. So I'm going to stop here for now and let somebody else talk.
Oh my, thank you. That was so good. Uh, my Mario daughter, what are the first two scriptures that you said? I didn't catch those. First Kings 721. Okay. And Chronicles 317. All right. Thank you. I wanted to make sure I got those. Okay. Ray and Vanessa, go ahead. You know, um, this is <laughs> this is such an important thing because, of course, here in America, we got monuments everywhere and they're mostly about white people and what white people have done. And we finally got one of Martin Luther King, you know, um, uh, here in Washington. And that's exactly where Ray and I are. But it, 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 it came to me. Um, I was watching a video of uh, how to pay tribute. And it was uh, very much about what how Black people pay tribute. And to go back, I know Mike uh, would probably remember this and some of you, you know, back in the day when uh, the person that we loved wasn't there, we would take our wine and we would spill it on a spill, spill a little bit of it on the ground. This is for the brothers who ain't here. That's what, that's what we used to do. And I would watch different people do this in my community. And it was a, a, a pour, pouring or libation um, a celebration. But then I was watching this one instance where uh, some young black women are invited to Africa and they go to Africa and they go to the grave of the white enslavers who they are trying to build a monument for. And instead of these women doing what this little brown boy did, which was his father taught him to walk up to this particular monument and spit on it. You're gonna, you're gonna hock and spit on this particular grave. These are your enslavers. <clears throat> We're not worshiping them, not praising them. This is how we do it. But I was disappointed in how the women went over the grave and twerked. That's what they did. Three African-American women went over the grave and twerked. And I was like, you have got to be kidding me. So you, you couldn't walk up and spit on the grave, throw dirt on the grave, you know, uh, even holler curses at it. But still, I'm, I'm like, I don't understand. Why would you do that? And it's just that when you don't understand sacred ground or you don't understand monuments, and this is why I'm so glad this is being taught because we're surrounded by them. They're, they're everywhere. If you were to go to Charleston, every racist American that killed or enslaved or owned slaves is on some type of horse, some type of monument. And I'm like, we don't have the sense enough to go by, spit on it, cuss it, kick it, whatever. But we we, we stand there and celebrate. Now, uh, I'm going to shut up, but there's, there's this man, uh, Roy Woods, who was a comedian. He cracks me up because Roy Woods doesn't mind talking about politics, okay? Yes, there's some foul uh, language in his mouth, but one thing that he said that was so true, he said, how do you expect African-Americans to be mind, um, to be patriotical? How are we supposed to be patriotic to a country that enslaved us, mm -hmm. still views us as less than a man? Mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't put your baby under a cow, uh, but you, 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 are, you ate at the breast of our mamas. Our mamas fed y'all, took care of y'all and everything else, but there's no glory in that. And so you want us to get up and sing, oh, say, can you see? Mm. How, uh, uh, yeah, we can see. We don't like what we see. <laughs> we we can see. Oh, trust me, we we, we, we don't need glasses. We, we Those of us who have our eyes open, we see clearly what you are doing to us and what you've done to us for hundreds and hundreds of years. That's why we can't sing, no, uh, uh, um, our, our country tis of thee. Sweet land of what? Mm. Sweet, sweet land of slavery of the <laughs> see. Yeah. land where our fathers lynched. <laughs> we cannot sit on a bench oh or drink God. out a fountain that you put your lips to <laughs> gallantly. We can't she make this up. These are the songs that we sing. Mm. Ain't nobody trying to sing your songs of, of, of liberty because there's no liberty in them. So there is no possible way as an African-American, as a brown person, as an indigenous person, that we can sing these songs and worship. But when Tatanzambi gives us a victory, I'm picking up the roughest rocks. 
<laughs> and and I'm I'm telling you, putting something on it and stick and put to and put it on top of each other. We've done it again. <laughs> In Geta. You, you, you know want to say that? <laughs> Ray, Vanessa was really paying attention during the presentation, man. She got everything. She didn't miss a thing. She's got to be looking for every rough rock she walks by and <laughs> picking it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, Nick, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to... Yeah, first of all, I uh, hope you're all well and uh, see me to everyone. I just wanted to contribute two points. One, uh, just a quick one. The the reason why we also have these altars is is uh, as, a, as a source of remembrance, just to recognize what the Most High has done throughout the ages so that it doesn't skip our minds. When we see them, we will remember so that we may remember to, to give thanks to the Most High and remember what he's done for us, as well as tracing back to from the days of Egypt. I think that's an important thing. And when people forget, there is a verse that says in Luke, Luke, say, Luke 19, verse 40 to 44, and I might just read it. Uh, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. Of course, it continues, but the stones will cry out. These stones, these altars are like pictures. They tell a story. They tell a story of the people who were there, what the people were doing, what they were going through, what they were about. So when you see the stones, it's like a billboard. The stones are billboards of, of the history. The stones are billboards of the past. The stones are billboards of the Most High. Mm -hmm. So they are billboards that people cannot move. And, and uh, we have different ones spread all across. And because they didn't know what these stones were, they just thought that these were just land formations or possibly just things that occurred naturally in the land. And they are also markers so that we can be able to trace our footsteps, our history, our locations. And the Most High has left a remnant. That's why he says, the stones will cry out. Even when you're lost, the stones will cry out. And I'm not just thinking about the altars that they made, but also, when you think about mountains, mountains were markers used by people. So they would they would tell you, go look at that. Once you see that mountain, just walk, you get to the mountain. So mountains were markers. So th this is like another consistent theme and pattern we see because Joshua writes the, goes up, writes the, the commandments or the laws, the law is given. And while the people are watching, again, it's very similar to the scenario in Mount Sinai, where Moses goes up, writes the, the commandments, then comes. But this is very interesting. They're just about to get to the land. So here in Moses' time, we see they are from Egypt. They come, they've defeated the Amalekites. Then now, they just got into this space, and then they are given the, the commandments. Here they're about to enter into the land of promise. They're about to enter into the land of promise, coming all the way from the 40 years of, of wandering. Now it's another chapter altogether. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing, I think the stones are a representation of our deliverance from the Most High. The victories the altars, the, 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 the stones represent what the Most High is to us as a people, as a country. The rest of the people don't acknowledge that. They will not put those things because the stones don't wear out, you know. It's literally set in stone, so to speak. 
So generations will always be able to tell of the wondrous works. They'll be able to see and hear the story based on stories. In Geta. Good one, good one, brother Nick. Oh my goodness, you guys are coming in real hard today. I can't keep up with my notes. Okay, uh, as we go along, uh, brother Nick T from uh, New Zealand, go up next. But I want people to think about this before you go. Was the cross a monument? Were we ever told to look at the cross like a monument? Hmm. Okay, brother Nick, go ahead. Um, yes, I just want to touch on um, a few things with um, our own culture here. So, in the um, before we have um, in in now lineage history, before we left um, Tahiti and migrated into um, into Aotearoa here, there are there are uh, there are altars that have been erected in on the island of um, in Rangiatia or um, Marahina in, in one of the main islands in Tahiti. So um, when these um, rocks were erected, they were they they were they were to um, praise for the Most High, and I think um, some of the victories that happened there. So um, these stones that were erected in Tahiti were, I think they're like thousands of years old, but um, that goes back to um, when I looked at that. When I first looked at that um, last year, when I had seen it, and it come and it had come through um, TikTok, and I had seen it, and I was wow, that is exactly the same as what Abraham had over in. They were exactly the same type of um, rocks they were um, put up and pillars they were put up there, and I was wondering like that was the um, that was the actual connection to way back to um Abraham so I, I I had it in my mind that we were that was part of our teachings as well and um Nick just um talked about the mountains and um we use these mountains as uh, um as as our altars as well in um here in here in with all our tribal um so each tribe here has a uh, um a mountain and um, we all have like rivers as well. So when we talk, when we speak, um, and and when we speak on someone's um, or we, when we come to speak, we talk about the mountains first, and then we talk about the rivers and the hours. But these mountains that um that um Nick was talking about, we use those also as um the altars. So that um, I think it's mentioned in Isaiah and or, or Ezekiel about these things, but I can now start to connect. The other one was when Vanessa said that um, <laughs> you spit on the altars when you walk past it. So I kind of I kind of laughed at that because that's what we do here. Is like if you see an uh, obelisk that's erected. Go past it and spit on it, and I always just think like, why do we do that? And then, my, and then, and then my elders will tell me because you know why? Why? Because these people they came and they did this, and they erect they did this to our people on the land, and they erected their monuments there. So when you walk past the boy, you just spit on it, and I went, oh, I got you. So it just lets me know that the colonials that came over and started building those um, monuments is, um, you know, it, it, it was about them um, and their victories over us. But um, the, the other thing that um, caught the wind of my eye and my ear was that um, these obelisks that are being erected, um, they go back all the way back to, to the Egypt, um, what I've seen in Egypt. And I heard a, I heard actually heard an elder in um in one of our meeting houses <laughs> and he, he was talking, but I was like, Do you know what he's talking about? Um asking what he was talking about. And they go, Yeah, he's talking about that um the obelisk that's up on um Mongo Keke, and he's telling them they erected someone's dick 
sorry, but <laughs> he rented someone's dick on top of the on top of the two um and I was going, what did he say that for? But he was what the other was saying was like he was just pointing out to um to all of his people that that's what they're doing. They then you know, and so I can relate to um this is a very hot topic actually. So yeah, Sam. Oh, thank you, brother Nick. You know, what you just talked about there, it's true. I can I can affirm that. And a lot of this pointed uh, monuments, like the one I was referring to, the one in DC, you know, um, they originate from idol worship of the male genitalia. And this came from Egypt, it goes back to the times of Nimrod, you know, and stuff like that. And we need to call it out as it is, because many times people don't even realize what they're doing. And in a lot of these colonial uh, colonies, in a lot of these colonies, including Nairobi, Kenya, they erected similar statues or similar uh, monuments. The British did. It's right there on uh, Kenyatta Avenue. That's the name of the street. I know I've seen them there. And they put them next to like World War soldiers and things like that, you know, so they kind of cover it up. No, 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 no. We're going to call them out and we're even going to pull them down. You know, that's what we need to start doing all around the world. You know, that time is up. Time of Gentiles is up. So, you know, it's time to just clean the slate and put up the proper monuments going forward. All right, let's go to Mama Emma, and then we'll go to Royal Daughter. All praises to the Most High. Yeah, this is so interesting. It's amazing. Uh, some of the things that the uh, Most High has been showing me, um, just in the history, and then and then you come up and you say, we're going to talk about monuments. It's like, monument? Oh. I, couldn't, I couldn't make the connection at first, and it's like, but then, like I said, I've been watching videos, and it's a, repeat, a lot of them are repeats. Uh, this one talked about uh, they're doing uh, archaeological digs of those giant, uh, uh, what they call them, myth, 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 lock, lock. Anyway, those large ro rocks that have the, the, the face of him, uh, man on it. In on this one island, I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, but they're digging down to show that um, they it, they just wasn't rocks with the face on it. Um, and so, um, and then um, the um, on, on a personal level, uh, trying to. Um, downsize and some of the things that I have. So my mom has all these plackets. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm I'm the end of that. So, you know, I, I have no need for what am I going to do with these things? Besides, they were false plackets, in other words. And then as you all begin to talk, it's like, okay, most I starting to show me the connections um, with what you're saying. These things we would we were supposed to do what they did and cause us to worship the the incorrect ones. Like you talking about the the, uh, the phallic symbol in, in Washington, D.C. Uh, I can remember in school, you know, when they start giving us grant money, you know, and uh, we could raise money to take bus, take the children uh, to Washington, D.C. to the monument. Um, and, and the one that we, they ignored a little bit, it just depended on what teacher you had was, um, Abraham Lincoln. So recently I, um, was listening to some of the, um, brothers and sisters who were talking about the history and they talked about, uh, Abraham Lincoln while he's sitting, while he's the only one human being, quote unquote, that's a monument in full human and sitting in a chair. So um, 
I mean, it's just so much. And it's like, as usual, this tidbits of little things that the Most High has been showing me that you bring out in this teaching and how we, the purpose of those monuments. And they knew that. Again, like I said, from the book of Maccabees, they knew the power that we had. And so they harnessed that power. They harnessed that power how? With spells and witchcraft. And I just saw teaching on that. It was like, oh my goodness. So it's not W-I-T-C-H craft. It's witch, W-I-C-H. Which one were they using? They used against us and made us believe that it was voodoo and demonic against our powers that the Most High gave us over nature. He gave us power over nature uh, to, you know, because it's what he has. And so anyway, I mean, this is so awesome. And I apologize that I don't have some more concrete information on what he was showing me because it's like, I tried to make the connection, but basically, uh, again, what I'm getting out of this is just, uh, like I said, when I came into into this uh, fellowship with you guys, it's like he gives me little things, and then you guys just got to fill in all the details because that's that's where we are. Because I'm the older ones, and I have uh, went through some of this stuff and been exposed to some of this stuff, but I wasn't able to uh, because of the time period. I wasn't awake enough, or I didn't have. Well, I wasn't his time for me to do anything about the information that he was showing me uh, back then. Like I said, you know, I never read this book, but there was a book that they put out, The Spook Who Sat By The Door. Mm -hmm. And it always caught my attention, mm -hmm. uh, the title, but just not understanding it a little bit. Uh, but now I'm, I'm seeing that because it's like, I was in places where people look at me like, what you doing here? And I would say the same thing. What are, what are you doing here? Because I would be the only one and I wouldn't even know why I was there. But now it's this, this information to confirm the things that he's showing us mm -hmm. in the book of the law, but mostly in our ability to hear his voice to direct us to these things in a concrete way. Just like one of the pictures that you showed today about your visit to um, uh, Mamre. Okay, the the caption under there was Jubilees. It's like we didn't we didn't get that from Jubilees. We didn't see that picture. You know, you got that picture directly by going there, and then now going back uh, on this um, subject of monuments. The Most High brings it back up, but you've all, he's already showed you that information. Uh, because again, we are the book of the law and the Most High is revealing that. And that's the other thing that he wanted me, reminded me of is like, we are the stones, we are the monuments. We are the living, lively stones mm -hmm. that he's talking about. And so, but he wants us, like you said, to be able to manifest these things in a physical way so that our children, our grandchildren that's coming behind us don't get lost in all this stuff, uh, these resets and these rewritings and uh, all those things. So they'll know how to uh, continue the memorial of who he was and who we are. So that's what I'm getting out of this. And it's just so much more, but yeah, I'll praise this to the most high. Uh, thank you for being obedient <laughs> to hearing his voice and to step out of like, we're going to talk about monuments. And that's all you gave us. Like, we just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay, but praise the most high. Again, another confirmation about hearing his voice and, and responding, mm -hmm. hearing his voice and responding. And then you go to the book. Then you go to the 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 other uh, pieces of information that he's left for us, but you know, confirmation. So praise the Most High. Ingeta, Ingeta, Ingeta.
All right, Mama Roy, our daughter, back to you. Yeah, I'm sitting here thinking about how, you know, when they wrote the commandments, how generic it is, you know, they have never, they never went into the details like the book of the law does. And, and then they make you, if you, the way they read and interpret the commandments to you, you shall not make any graven image, you know, don't memorialize your people. Don't remember, you know, it is strictly making us feel like these things are strictly forbidden. And that's why this topic today is so important because, you know, as we seek to get back on the right path, we have, you know, to seek truth. He said, because it is not the truth, but it is the knowledge of the truth that will set you free. So we seek to know truth and, you know, disseminate them from the lies. And so, you know, when they say, oh, don't make any graven image, but images of them and their fathers are all over the world. So what are we saying? Even in their churches, you know, what are we, what are they trying to say to us? Don't obey what your father told you don't obey disobey keep being in disobedience so we can keep ruling over you you know there is one that's uh one scripture or one piece of uh, a scripture that's really controversial and i don't know why because it it speaks for itself in the scripture itself um, it's uh 1 Corinthians 11 24 and Luke 22 19. Uh, it is uh says, uh, this is Isaiah speaking, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, do in remembrance of me. We heard the word remembrance, right. Good. So now we go back to ancient Egypt. Where coming out of the ancient Egypt, all the miracles that the Most High worked for our, for our ancestors. And he said, you should memorialize these. Why? So we would not be in the position we are in now. We would not have gone through all these hundreds of years of slavery and affliction if we would have known the things that we're learning now, you know? So he said, memorialize these things. Let them know who their God is. Let them know who they are. For hundreds of years, we have not known who we were. We, lost. we were lost. So when they call us, say the, the tribes of Israel are lost, they were right. We were lost. We're now coming back into the memory. So now, one of the things that he said was uh, when we put the blood on the door, you know, that it would cover us from the angel of death. But that blood and the, that lamb, that, that Passover lamb was pointing to something. And see, the important thing is that there was a fulfillment. And this is what this memorial is about. We have to know that somebody fulfilled this prophecy as the Most High had told us. So now when he says... This is my body, which is broken for you. What is he saying? He's not saying to eat a person. That's not what he's referring to. He's referring to him taking the place of the Passover lamb. Because in that night, he died on the same night. He was arrested and died within that 24 hours, the same night as the memorial of the Passover. And so he had two suppers that night. 
When he had eaten supper, he got up, he washed his disciples' feet, and he had the second supper, which is, he says, do this in remembrance of me. It is a memorial. A more, memorial, too, is an annual thing. We see people taking what they call communion every, every month and every week, and that's not what scriptural. Uh, he said, do this in, in remembrance of me, meaning that we are, this is a monument for your children to know that I have come and I have taken the place of the lamb, the Passover lamb. And so this is to let them know that they are now free. This, this started the journey to our freedom. So why, you know, don't, he said, he never told us to celebrate his birthday. We don't even know when his birthday is. He didn't want that because that wasn't what he came for. But he told us to do this in remembrance of me. Keep a memorial of my death. Not because of his death, but because of what his death brought. That he was covering us. From that day on, he was our high priest. He was our covering. And so this is something that we should never, ever, ever forget. And they try to make us forget. They try to trivialize it. They try to confuse it. Say you're eating a uh, human body and drinking human blood. That's not what he said. When he spoke of this, uh, th this is my body, he is saying that I'm taking the place of the lamb. So we don't eat people's body and drink people's blood. We do it as a rem he said he he come when he spoke when we we understand that you know he is the most high he is the word and whatever the word says is law. So when he spoke he didn't stutter do this in remembrance of me. Remember who gave you freedom? That's what we are to remember. He, especially us coming in this time. In the days of the awakening, what we call the awakening, when he is he is he is opening our eyes. Remember how you got here, because this what ha that happened two thousand years ago is the reason we're here now. Is the reason where 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 our eyes are getting cleared up, the veil is getting removed. All these miraculous things are happening for us because of this. And so he says, "Do this in remembrance of me." Ingeta. Oh, my, 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 my. Mama Rea, daughter, when you guys went to Angola, everything changed. Two dime, what is that? <laughs> Whatever that phrase was. Two dime, yes. muda. Everything changed. Everything. I mean, you're saying one thing, I'm understanding the same thing, and also some more. You know? <laughs> I mean, you got me tearing up over here. Guys, that was so deep. Oh, my goodness. Yes, that was good. We'll come back to it. Ray and Vanessa, go ahead. <clears throat> that was a deep drink right there. <laughs> I mean, truly a deep drink that you needed to just kind of swallow in your spiritual mouth and just let it stay there for a minute because uh, what, a, what a price that was paid, you know, even, even in washing his feet. You know, and it's something common that we do. I used to own a business where I would go to people's houses and wash their feet. That's what I was hired for. And feet are something so, oh, you know, I don't know what your toes look like. I don't know, you know, we can be so disgusted by feet. But it was the way that our culture showed love, respect, honor was to wash your feet. And we don't want to do that now. I mean, you, you know, to, to touch your feet, ew, I just don't know. And it is, I don't know, he planted it in my heart. It is something that I love to do is wash people's feet. I love washing people's feet. It is the ultimate show of love. And what a monumental way is to, when I meet you all finally, is to wash your feet. That would be the celebration for me 
of meeting you, Matavi, meeting you, royal daughter, Mama Emma, Nick, to, uh, you know, all of you to wash your feet. That would be such an honor. But, you know, I, I have this, you know, even with, to what my royal daughter said, when he spoke to um, Elijah and Elijah says, oh, there's none but me. I'm the only one. He says, no, no, no. I have some that have never kissed their lips or worshiped them, you know, and, and, and these people are, 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 are worshipers and they know how to worship me and they remember what I've done. And it's so important that we remember uh, 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 what he's done and that you did it in such a way, Mama Royal Daughter. I worked in a private um, uh, religious school, uh, Jewish school. And they did not like black people. And it was very, very plain to me that they, they, didn't, they did not like black people because all the hundred people they had hired, they only hired two, me and another black woman who was working there. And the woman that I worked um, under was, she wanted me out of there. She did not want me there. And I would go into the library and they had this book. And the book was, a, it was a strange book. The book was about a black woman who came from slavery on a ship but one of the rituals that she was do is she would burn a candle and she would do this every um, uh, samba. She would do this on every samba. And a little girl uh, finds out that her grandmother, she said, grandmother, why do you do this? Why do you light this candle? And she said, we light this cam candle in remembrance of what was done for us. Now she goes into slavery and everything and they did not want me to have this book. They didn't. And I'm and, and I was in a different place back then. For spite, I stole the book, y'all. Mm. I stole it. I did. I put it in my bag and I took it. <laughs> and I was like, y'all don't need this one here anyway. I got a black person there. Y'all don't, don't want to hear. I'm, I'm helping y'all out. <laughs> That's my attitude. I'm helping you out. I'm getting rid of the black people. I'm going to take this one with me. But it always intrigued me that this little girl was watching her grandmother light the Samba candles before Samba. And I asked, I did ask the question, is this something that we did that they took from us? Is this another thing that we do to honor our people? And in and, and one little um, aspect, I'm in a, a, a meditation thing. And the, the woman is saying, we need to ask our ancestors to come in. And the first thing I said, witchcraft, witchcraft, witchcraft. everything was witchcraft. Because if you were raised in my house, breathing was witchcraft, okay? <laughs> Every, everything was witchcraft. And so I just, I was so scared to do it. And now all I want to do is do what our people have been doing so that we get the results. And that is following the law. That is following this commandment, this covenant, and not going against it. Because like I said, they know that when we do this, he shows up. We can't fight them when they obey. We can't fight them when they put monuments and places of victory over us. We, we, we can't do that, you know? So so we definitely need, to, as, as Royal Daughter said, keep them eyes peeled open wide. It's already been done. It's already been done. I can't wait to wash your feet in Geta. <laughs> in Geta. Yeah. You know, when I was discussing with Nick, Nick from Kenya, early today morning, <clears throat> my time. We were so like excited. We started looking for some of these monuments, you know, because we know some of these locations. And guess what we found out? So far in that one hour of discussion, we found out all these conservancies, national parks, UNESCO World Heritage, it's our monuments in there, y'all. It's our monuments in there. And they've got inscriptions on rocks. They've got drawings on rocks, you know, and they come and label them UNESCO World Heritage Site. I think what scares them is that when they try to go everywhere, they just see monuments to Tatanzambi, monuments to Tatanzambi. They're like, they can't hide from it, you know? Now imagine if we knew about it and we started going, no, I'm not going on vacation to whatever. I'm going to check out this monument. I'm going to check out this monument. I'm going to find out what happened to Joshua, what happened to Moses, what happened to Abraham. Where do you think those touristic dollars are going to go? They're going to go back home. 
to our countries. Michael, go ahead. Same family. I just wanted to uh, touch on that thing about the C two, Ms. Vanessa. I didn't. I didn't really have a, uh, a understanding of how how important it was, but I just took it. You know, you see your mother. She work every day. She work on her feet. You know, let me get to them toes. And you get you get home. You, uh, put this little bucket down here. Stick your feet in there. But when I hear her talk to my grandmother. And I hear them discuss, you know, you know, I was I was a legit youngin, but it it they talked about it in such a manner that I had to scratch my head. You know, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't understand. And then you know I get older because it was just what I did, you know. But it did bring me joy to see her have you know smile on her face. You know, everybody do everything else. Last thing they want to do is get down by the feet. What do you mean? That's you don't have those taken care of. You can't stand, you know. Then I'm um, getting older. And then you hear you hear the uh, the stories and you know that they're telling the church. And that one about the lady, she used the hair and washed the feet. And I don't know. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get that. You know. I didn't understand that. But now that I do, man, uh, my mother's been, man, super, I mean, really, really sick for the last couple of years. But I tell you, that's one of the main things she talks about is how, you know, she misses never getting a chance to wash her mother's food. You know, it. Uh, we started to talk on that thing last year, but we didn't. It was too heavy for her. You know, it was it was so emotional for her. she just she couldn't she couldn't talk about it. But she would just hug me and thank me, but I did I still didn't get it. But Ms. Vanessa, I get it now. I get it. Man, it, it I'm going over there in a couple of hours and that'd be the main thing I, I look forward to. Man, getting her feet. And you know, you got these little Little, little buckets and things that do bubbles and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. You know, she got a couple of them to give over years, but she doesn't use them. She she just rather me come on over with the regular little, the little beige, little rectangle joint. Just toss you one foot at a time, man. Take your time. You, uh, I, I really do see uh, the difference in their spirit after. You know, and it. It really didn't spark a, a really big light bulb until just a few minutes ago. To hear you say that, that that's something that you'd like to do. Man, all oh, my fingers got to go on in this book looking for, <laughs> looking for, you know, some, some scriptures and all it, but he already put it in us. So I, I don't got to go through and find it. I, 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 I recognize it in my spirit. That's one of the things that's been so awesome too, to to have that confidence to know that you got it in there. You know, when you're younger, when you gotta go, oh, I gotta go to the Bible. You don't even want to go to the Bible because everybody else, they know it by heart. Oh, chapter so and so, 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 so. Well, I guess I could too if I just read it, read it, read it, read it, memorize it in order to do that, but not use them in a way that they were supposed to be used. You ain't keeping them inside. It's, it's wonderful, like I say, to have it. And so, uh, today, dealing with these monuments, you just touched on it. Elder, you touched on it. Man, when I seen it, I went straight to UNESCO. I said, yo, I'm going to look up UNESCO monuments of continent because I've always, uh, always wondered, who is this? Who's UNESCO? Who are you that you got all these different places and things that, why, you know? Yeah, I get it now. You know, it's a lot. It's a lot that we've we've run across over the years, and to get the understanding of it, but you know, history and and meeting other people who've seen certain things and talking it. This is truly spiritual. We, I do get it now. Where it says he's opening the books, it's us, and this 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 conversation, this this meeting. 
every every samba it's 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 more it's more insightful. It it, it gets you gets you going or get the comfort, but the, to get confirmation of certain things is is unexplained. I know I'm not this smart, you know, but it, it ain't no way, man. I I, I know these things that I got to do. And then I, it 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 uh it makes me smile to know that I I just gave it to him every night, even by myself. I'm, I'm you know I'm not not liked or anything. You know I just prefer to be alone sometimes. I like people; they cool, everybody all right, family cool. You know people are just how they are, but everybody's not in that. Everybody's not in that space with you. Sometimes I don't want you in my space when I want to be in the space with him, especially on today. You know. So I mean, it's, I don't know if it sounds bad to people or anything. I definitely don't care when it's the truth. It's just the truth, you know. And uh, brother Nick, man, when you said that about grandmothers, man, my grandmother used to tell me, you know, I didn't understand it. I'm the only boy. Oh, you know, I had it bad about this spitting thing. You better not spit. I better not see you spitting, spitting, spitting. Oh, I couldn't. I couldn't help but spit. But to hear her tell me something about, you know, you you know, when you see the them people, you see them people's stones on they on their grave, on they on their grave, and you see them people's stones. You just you give them a nice one. Man, yeah, you give them a nice, you spit on that thing, keep on going. What? Like this lady, she one foot in the heaven. She telling me to spit and she would break my neck any other time I would spit. I understand it. So good. I understand it. They have got they had a little piece of something and didn't and didn't have the knowledge to convey it to us. This is how I, I get it. Or either I was just not knowledgeable enough or mature enough to get what she was saying. But when he, when he said, when Nick said that, I, it jumped the boogie in me like, oh snap, I remember. I remember her saying that. I'm like, oh snap, yes. I don't I didn't maybe I was the only boy. And she didn't, you know, boys were nasty. So maybe boys get to spit. No, she knew what she was talking about. And she knew she knew she knew who her grandson was, you know, and what he would be and how I stood up. Everybody else probably wouldn't do it. I hock it twice, you know. I I really do, I really do, really do appreciate everything. I I I just I love the fact that we can just we can just talk, you know, and just bring the truth and just because it's so it's so edifying. It it mm -hmm. helps in studying and everything. And I appreciate it. I let it, someone else go in get that. In get that. Oh, thank you for those comments, Brother Michael. All praises to Tatan Zambi. You know, he just says, go discuss this. I have no idea what's gonna come out of it. You know, I just say, okay, you know. All right, Sister Michelle, how are you doing in the UK? Go ahead. Hi, Brother Matavi. I'm doing fine. Hello. I'm kind of well cozied up on my sofa in my fleece at the moment. Um. Oh, gosh, today uh, I didn't get a chance to come on from the beginning, but um, for what I've been hearing, it's been incredible. Um, so you, you would be speaking about monuments and I remember watching this video of one of these, um, church prophet people talking about the names of Nzambi. Now, obviously we've now learned the name of Nzambi and it's just Nzambi. God is Nzambi. Like he doesn't need any other names, but then he started breaking down, um, he started talking about the other names like Jehovah Rapha, the note Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Elielion, and everything. But in each of the times that he that um be it Moses or Joshua or any of the other um patriarchs that in that time named him, even jo um Jacob, it was in a, a a particular moment in their life and in a particular place in their life. And at that moment, they erected an altar and said, um, Jehovah 
Nisi, my Bana or my Jehovah Eliel, that in that particular place, it was not the fact that it's God's name or Nzambi's actual name. And so now that you're speaking about Moni, I was like, oh my gosh, that's like, because we we sing all those names, Jehovah Jireh, my provider, Jehovah Nisi, oh yeah, and all of that. But in all of those places where he got all of those names, there were monuments that were there for us to go there, visit, as you said, and actually know that in this place, the Most High in Zambia and Pungudalenda was the banner of our people. And he delivered them in that place. And this has just blown my mind because I'm like, wow. So we have really been misled by all the names that our Mpungu Zaleda has had over the years. And we've not been able to memorialize all of these things. I mean, every month we should be celebrating and memorializing what the Most High did for our people. For that's to us to remember all the time and be able to go to those monuments and stand there, just like those Muslims that go to those pilgrimages and they go there bowing and blah, blah, blah. We should be able to do that too. Like our people like were delivered by our Nzambi at those places. And we didn't and we're only now understanding the significance. Of the Lord, and even what Mama Rose says, it's like wow. I mean, I've looked at the Lord's Supper in a whole load of different ways. I had my skepticism about it, and this and that, and now it's just like it makes sense now. I will gladly partake of my Lord's Supper <laughs> and memorialize what my my Amona did for me because. It's a memorial and every year I've got to do it because I am remembering every stripe, every torturous nay, every lick, every fawn, everything that he undergone for me on that day. I am now remembering he did it for me. So like, yeah, this has just been amazing. Thank you, everyone. In ghetto. In ghetto. Oh, my. In ghetto. <laughs> Michelle, you spoke hey, like every yeah. Michelle, you spoke like every Isolele member in Europe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the power was just awesome, awesome, awesome. Let me go first to Brother uh, Vincent. Uh, oh, did he disappear? I think he lost his connection. Okay, we'll go back to you. No, I'm here. I'm here. I'm oh, here. You're there. Go ahead. Go yeah. ahead. Uh, thank you, bro. Happy Sunday, everybody. Uh, monuments, monuments, monuments. I just don't know where to start. Um, interesting enough, when the Mosa was saying they'd build the altars, said they should be of unroute stone, which means stones that no human being has worked on. So in our lives, when we're doing the altars, we are lives are priests offering offerings ourselves. The scripture says that we should be making offerings on ourselves. And we are stones uncut by human hands. So we're not to be molded by human beings. We're not supposed to take the shape of uh, preachers, that kind of thing. Only the most is supposed to work on us. Now, when you go to the other side of the monuments that he said we should build in remembrance, and I love somebody, somebody puts the milestones. For every time that we go through something, we remember this time, at this time, the most I did this and Every time I go back, I'm run, I've run out of strength. I remember that monument as go back. Can you imagine when this guy, the soil was going around the wilderness for 40 years? They'll probably come and remember, see a monument that they came up, they did 10 years ago, and remember, oh, this one, this one, the Amalekites coming after us, and we did this to them. This one was at AI. This we did, this is when we messed up. And then God has sorted us out. This happened every time. By the time they go around that for 40 years, can you imagine how many monuments have got scattered all over this, this continent, you know? How many they are. And of course, as you said correctly, they're, they're hidden in the, in the UNESCO sites and conservancies. Now, I was thinking about our own monuments, some of the monuments, apart from the one you mentioned in Kenyatta Avenue or something. You know, when the Portuguese came to Africa, 
to Kenya specifically, they went to put a big monument at the coast. This was somewhere in 1489, 1490s. And Vasco da Gama came and put a big pillar that this is where he, it's almost as big as a lighthouse. And you can see it for miles. And now the local government has protected it and all that kind of thing. So I think when you take a different view, with the so many monuments that are hidden, covered up, I had somebody talk about the ones in Tahiti and the Maori Islands or those kind of things. Can you imagine what will happen when they start turning up and we start realizing that this is, these are the monuments that those who went before us put down and what they overcame and everything else. It's going to be a bonfire because right now the so-called archaeologists are hiding the truth because they don't want the, the, it's just too, too hard for them to accept what is that, who we are. So they have been hiding every, all the kind of monuments that they can find, ship the ones that they can to the each land and try and recreate them there. But now what happens about the ones that are going to be discovered everywhere? Then, then when the information becomes too heavy, there is no running, there's no turning point because the most has definitely deposited, made sure these monuments are scattered everywhere. And it's just a matter of people getting ready for it because you think about when you go into other countries, uh, even we've done, people have done monuments of everything that we can think about. We have monuments of the slave trade. We have monuments of all the good and bad times that we have. But the Most High has got his own monuments, which his people did. And those things we just need to be able to sort, when they start turning up, be able to recognize and say, this is a testament of what the Most High did. It doesn't matter what you're for, you'll be able to be able to identify because the scripture that you read says, inscribe on them. So we're looking, we're not looking for things that we will not be unidentified. They'll be identifiable. I remember a conversation almost two, three years ago about some um, pul some pulpits in somewhere in Europe, where but not Europe, in the US. When they took the the guys were taken down the slave trade, and the guys went and marked on the chairs in Hebrew in the local Hebrew language, and so the the question was what if that language was Hebrew or not, and whether those that was evident that the black there were black the Jews the people who were there, the children of Israel or the black Americans at that time were so called actually uh, Jews. That was a monument. So the monuments will begin turning up and they will be inscribed. They will not be leaving guesswork. These guys came and stole the idea. They used the idea. They made us look to, up to their ideas and their monuments. And everywhere they went, they put up the monuments to show how they conquered. But the Mosa is going to put his monuments, they're still coming up to light so that we can be able to see. Remember his promise. During the last days, all many things that are hidden shall come to be, and they shall be revealed. And he'll give us the secrets of darkness hidden in secret places. Thank you. Ingeta. Ingeta. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's all coming round. It's all coming round. Let me go to... Ingeta. So Sister Matuidi, and then Asaf, and then I'll come to the other guys who've spoken before. Sister Matuidi, go ahead. Yes, <laughs> see me. Oh, I'm just remembering uh, when I was young, um, living in, in Guyana, um, my grandmother took me to a garden, and this garden had a statue of Mohammed Gandhi. And that statue, you know, he had a stick in his hands, and I think it was in bronze or something like that, that statue. But I could see that the statue was moving. And I was saying to my grandma, he's moving, he's moving. And she was like, no, he's not. I said, yes, he's moving. And then she said to me, you know what? Let's get you out of here because they know me as, as when I was young, I used to see things. So they, they were, my grandmother was like, come, let's get you out here because I have to talk to your mother. We have to do something about you. Um, but saying that, they did something to my eyes and things like that, but I'm not going to get into that right now. But that statue, you know, some of these statues that they have is their hot, hot altar. Is the altar where they, like, 
put things under there to tamper with the land and, you know, just stop people, you know, whatever they want to do on, on these lands, on these, in these countries, you know, you know, the Chinese, when they go to other country, they put up their big stuff, you know, to mark the, mark the spot we are here, but that's the altar they're putting up there, you know? So, um, that's one thing I want to talk about that statue that I have seen move, um, and then um, Sister Vanessa talk about washing of the feet. Um, you know, washing of the feet, it, sometimes I do events, a kids event, and I do spa parties. And I do wash the kids' feet. <laughs> I do wash the feet. And, and there's something that too that I like doing. And I do understand the spiritual side of it as a priest, you know, because we are priests, priests. So I do understand that side of it. And, you know, the father of the house, you know, he's supposed to wash the feet of his, his household. Oh, in the Bible there, it's written. So um, I just wanted to make um, those two remarks of um, that I do. And um, this lived through of that event of scene of the that statue move actually in it oh sister matridi thank her. you for that comment while you were talking while you were talking about that i got a revelation for you we'll talk about that one later on i hope you can stick on about that speaking and that statue moving or rather that statue moving okay very good one okay who is uh brother asaf go ahead It, uh, um, I didn't have too much time to read ahead, so I, I just kind of had a thought on what I'm hearing. Um, this is uh, interesting. First, I want to bring, I, I want to piggyback off of the washing of the feet real quick. I still don't know how to digest that. Um, for some reason, but it's hitting me deep, though. It, it, it sounds beautiful. Man, when she said that, like, I can't wait to watch the thing. That's deep, man. Huh? Um, I don't know. It never made too much sense to me. And for some reason, it's like I it, I, I feel like I still don't have a complete intellectual understanding of it. But I feel, man, I feel that. Like, what better way to show I love you? So that's deep. Yeah, right on. Um, so um, thank you for that, though. Um, but just uh, thinking about the... Um, the monuments, what we're talking about with these monuments and everything. It's just interesting. Like I said, I, I didn't have too much time to really put my thoughts together. So forgive me if I say anything uh, incorrectly or whatever, but it, it is interesting. It's just, it's like the collective, everything we're studying is just, you know, growing up in Christianity, you're kind of um, everything focuses in towards everything goes towards the Christ and the new system. Right. And now it's really like what we're seeing is not supposed to be we were supposed to be remembering. Every look at how much is, is, is put in place for us to constantly remember. Right. We had to remember our fallen brothers, the angels. They was our little brothers. You know what I mean? We had to remember what they did. You know what I mean? We had to remember what our parents did. We had to remember what our parents went through. Getting kicked out of the garden and everything. There's remember, there's, there's all these things. There's all this history. Everything collectively, really, that we talk about in history is about our remembrance. Wow, that's good. So everything, it's really, it's about remembering us. I don't care if you're talking about dinosaurs or anything else. It points back to, we're supposed to remember. Even when we, when we have our sabata, you, you know what I mean? It's, it's remembering the rest because don't we reflect? Look, look at how much we reflect on these days of rest. You know what I mean? It's, and then, you know, we just went through that Maccabees and everything. I don't know what types of monuments may exist for any of those horrible stories we were reading about, but just the fact that the story exists 
and now it's passed on to us. That in itself is a monument, but it's it's the remembrance of, you know, it's like, again, it just made me think of these like 80s Roots movies and everything or 70s whenever give out. But, um, you know, remember your ancestors, remember what they went through. And OK, OK. And that started getting played out because it's like at one point you're like, OK, I got you, got you. And then that started, OK. And then we started just. But this is what it's about. It's remember. Right. And then now. When we talk scripturally, we're just at the point of, A, now that I'm getting you to remember and understand, and we're now going to start setting these stones of remembrance. I need this. Now, now we're establishing. Ooh, when you're setting up stones, you're, you're establishing a foundation. Dang, I don't even know where to go with that. All right. So, all right. <laughs> that has. All right. So. Hey, I get that. Yeah, well, we need to marinate on those stones. We need to marinate on those stones. I'm yes. sure going to get a lot of revelation on that. You know, I already had some notes about the stones. You know, there, there's a lot there. There's a lot. Uh, Mama Emma, go ahead, and then we'll have Nick. Yes, yes, yes. Added some more clarity to the thoughts that I had. So I put the reference for that Um. um YouTube video uh, in uh, Telegram. Okay, so um, what I what I got was, in addition to building this monument, this memorial, um, is First Corinthians. It's always having my page, my my mouse. Okay, let me just get this right quick. Okay, here we go. First Corinthians. <laughs> oh, goodness. First Corinthians. Uh, I put it. I lost it that quick. I'm sorry. I mean, I apologize. I had this set up, so I wouldn't. Okay, here we go. First Corinthians. I'm sorry, I can't find it now. But anyway, a building made without hands. Okay, again, uh, in my first comment, Most High uh, was reminding me, he's, he's talking about us. Okay, we came into the awakening to find out who we are and whose we are. Okay, we found that. So, so now we're all the way over here uh, again with this extravagant. Um, I think it's like the ending and um, yeah, we, well, we all know that but on this particular topic of monuments and stones and things made out of uh, impermeable kinds of uh, stuff and so the other uh, visual that he gave me was Statue of Nebuchadnezzar Okay, and we all wait, we all wait at the feet. So that's that was the clue too about the feet. Um, and and on a personal note, before I go on, when my mom came to stay with me in her last days, I used to do that too, wash her feet. I used to take care of her feet. Um I don't like I said, I don't <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't think of it in terms of, you know, foot washing, you know, connected with the church because um, her thoughts on that was different than my thoughts. But anyway, that's just one thing I would do on a consistent ba basis, maybe every two weeks. Yeah, I'll soak her feet and, and give her a, a pedicure. Uh, anyway, so again, uh, this walking, this these feet, this and this other scientific thing that we learned that I learned, and I can't remember specifically, but people who may be in, in medicine or whatever talks about the strength of our feet and how much weight it carries. 
especially when we're moving and stuff like that. Um, so anyway, this, uh, I'm so, this is, I just, oh, the soles of our feet. Oh my goodness. Yes. Um, oh, I done got scatterbrained over <laughs> all this information just now. Anyway, uh, building made without hands. Okay, the body, us. We, again, we are that memorial. And remembering the Most High says, he, when he remembered, just like in the first Exodus, he said he remembered. And when we looked up the definition, remembering was not just called to your mind, it was what he did. So in these last days, he remember his promises to us and he and we're hearing his voice and he's leading us into these steps. OK, and why is he leading us into step so that we can rule and reign righteously? Because we didn't we don't know how to do that. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> uh, some of the some of the things that they taught us about ruling righteously was, was not correct. And an example is um, that's coming to my mind now is um, uh, Saul, not Saul. Oh, shucks. The king Solomon, when when he asked for wisdom, and and remember um, the first thing, at least in our Bibles, that I, uh, I was taught about his wise ruling was when the two women. And, and, and the children, he said, let's just cut, cut the baby in half and you have half. And that was the way he knew who was a real mother. And so these are things that we have to watch out for as far as learning how to rule righteously because the, sh the government is on our shoulders now. So, uh, and, and, and again, the feet is carrying all this. It's carrying the weight of the world on our shoulders. So, uh, and the scripture says, we will, do you not know you will judge angels? And and some of the things that uh, uh, Aesop said, he's like, okay, that's adding to the clarity of that thought that the Most High gave me about that is because he wants us to re be reminded of what they did and how they did it and how they're doing it now and, and how are we going to judge them? You know, we got to learn to judge the way the Most High is judging us. He's given us mercy, and uh, but he's already told us and told the angels what their judgment is. And we cannot come against that because then we're saying, you, know, you didn't make a right, righteous judgment. So it's the same thing. All of this stuff about monuments and the monuments, it took me to a, another uh, part. It talks about uh, uh, the sepulcher and how they have all these uh, monuments about the birth of Jesus and where he's buried and, and you know, that you're Mary and all those kinds of things of how they have, again, desecrated the purpose of the Most High telling us what to do about our enemies. So, uh, and then the other thing it says that uh, I had downloaded this, the final judgment of judicial judgment uh, of all that are under sin, of course, that's in Galatians 3.22. Um, the scriptures has shut up all men, M-E-N, under sin, and the promise by confidence in Tatan Zami, Sanini Nanini, might be given to those who have confidence of those who believe. So again, all these things that we're talking about, monument, why monuments? Because the Most High is going to show us all these monuments all over the world uh, in the promised land that he gave us uh, and and how they have hidden those things. Like somebody brought those brought that out, how they've hidden those things 
so that we can't see them and be reminded of what we are sent here to do. And what we sent here to do, have dominion in the earth realm and to replenish it with righteousness. Okay, so then, let's see, what was the other thing? Uh, uh, okay, I'll go back and, uh, and wait my turn because I see some, I see some <laughs> people ready to jump in on this. But anyway, uh, yes, those are some of the things he was showing me. It's like I was trying to get those scriptures and stuff in order. And as soon as I get ready to talk, it just overwhelms me. I mean, it just <laughs> overwhelms me that you just have to ooh, just stop and just praise the whole yeah. time because this is awesome how he is keeping his promise. He said he will have us rule and reign in paradise. Mm. I saw a video uh, somebody else put on um, Facebook about South Africa and the things. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, the beauty of that place that mo most of us, even to this day, haven't seen. We've seen all this. We see Johannesburg, but they show us the negative part of what they are doing. Mm -hmm. And even, even, um, and I had mentioned this, there was this young man who I watched this video that had came over from America from Florida. And I just found out he went, they moved back to Florida. I don't know why they did that. But anyway, <laughs> uh he was showing, you know, some of the nice parts of, of, of Johannesburg or Joburg as they call it. But in order to get to those nice parts, they got to go through the hell places, you know, of the the Africanas and, and all those different rainbow people mm -hmm. to get to places that look like uh, Miami Beach. Ah. In the, in the high, I mean, it's just you. I'll put the video on uh, Telegram. It just will blow your mind. It will blow your mind with how they have built up and covered up yep. cement, mm -hmm. but they, you know, they still maintain some of the beauty of the natural. It is so in ghetto. In ghetto. Thank you, Mama Emma. Thank you, Mama Emma. <laughs> yeah, people, we gotta keep those notebooks next to us because you know the most I feeds is like we're feeding from a fire hydrant. Yes, <laughs> yes. So, Make notes as you go along, you know, so we don't lose this information. Okay, uh, Nick, and then Mama Rea daughter right after, uh, and then Ray and Vanessa. Okay, uh, I just wanted to make notes in terms of the altars and why I think it's important. I mean, uh, coming from the backdrop of what we've been learning and uh, just understanding, it's it's almost like we are in a curriculum <laughs> i'd call it uh, <laughs> the kingdom curriculum so to speak and and we've been learning things that are gradually taking us another step to another step but the most High has been teaching us these things in a certain order and without us probably not paying that much attention but there is an order that the most High has been revealing these things to us and when i look at it for example when you look at these altars and monuments, there's that section where you are reading that they would take stones and small stones and and uh, kind of like throw them against the the graves of the persecutors and blasphemers on on verse five of of the book of the law. Now, I just wanted you guys to just picture a certain kind of religion, when they go over to pilgrimage, what they tend to do and what they tend to throw and what they were they are throwing that towards. And you connect that to this certain verse that says, throw to persecutors, blasphemers. It's almost like we are being told, look at the blasphemers. They are throwing the small stones to themselves. You know, they go all these things and they go to do it. 
and this is living evidence, the blasphemers, right? So it's it's that part also, I thought it was important to note. And secondly, uh, just to note the order of altars that are in, in the Bible, the ones that we, we see. So the first altar is from Noah. Then you go to Abraham. And, and uh, I just, when you guys were talking, I just listed them down and I look at it. And it's, and it's very interesting because the most I does is things in certain, it's like you you almost have to like do some CSI sort of. And, and but he's just hiding it in plain sight for us to see. And uh, just get it. Uh, Together. So when you look at the, you see first the first altar as the one that uh, Noah built, and then you come to Abraham, and then from Abraham he built three altars. Jacob who built two altars. Then you go like that. But the interesting thing is not just the way the altars have been mentioned, but also. Uh, it is in the verses that these altars are done. So when you look at the altars themselves, you will not, I mean, you look at the verses that these altars are found in, you see a certain uh, kind of pattern. You start to see there's, there's a pattern to this. So it's not just that the, the altars are, are there, but also there's a pattern into which like, for example, Genesis 8.20, when Noah built the altar to the Lord, the, the chapter is 8, the, the verse is 20. So when you add 8 to 0, it's a 1. It means complete. Then you look at Abraham built an altar to the Lord. It's Genesis 12.17. 12, 12.7, uh, 12, it's 1, 2 plus 7, right? It's a 19. The number, I mean, it's it's 10. One is one plus two is three, and then plus seven, it's ten, it's a one. So you you kind of start noticing there is there is another set of communication the most high is given to us, which we have to like decipher as well. And it's the same for uh, when Moses built the altar at the foot of the mountain, Exodus 24, 4. Two plus four is six, six plus four is ten and all this. Then you look at the number of altars. In, there are no altars mentioned in the New Testament except when Paul mentions uh, in Acts 17, 23, mentions about an unknown altar to an unknown God, something like that. But the rest of the altars are found in the Old Testament, and there are 18 altars. All together, I mean, you have somewhere built an altar, Saul built an altar, David built an altar, and the altar, the last altar we know of is, is by Elijah in 1 Kings 18.32. So we are gradually discovering that there is a sequence and there is a pattern. It's orderly in as much as we might not have had the privilege to look at it from a bird's eye view to notice the kind of order there is in. But, you know, the Most High is just like doing his thing behind the scenes, revealing these deep things. So when he says he's revealing this deep knowledge or hidden secrets, these are the things he's just telling us. And when it's like when you see an image of an altar like the one in, in, uh, in Mamre, you just know. Every other time you see something like you just know. It, it, it is like a mugshot. <laughs> you just know. You are not going to, to get it wrong because you will see it. You will just know this is the handwriting of the Most High in the way he does his things. So how else can we be able to trace our footprints in the continent? We look for where these kind of stones are. Then it will give to us uh, a revelation of how these guys were moving, right? Correct. We know, we know there are altars in Southern Africa. We know Jacob made an altar. We know Isaac made an altar when he found 
Barsheba. So where there is that altar, there is water. And of course, there is traces. Abraham could not make an altar without water nearby. It was always with water because the sacrifices had to be washed. You know, it's, it's the most revealing these things to us. And Elijah, the same thing, and things like that. So, uh, all in all, in, in revelation of these altars, it's also a reflection of it's a reflection of, like Brother Vincent said, and someone said, it's a reflection of the first altar built. The human body was Adam was the first altar, right? Because the most I bring into him, he's living, and he was holy. That's why it says, so you, 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 you're, you're an altar to the most high in terms of your, your, what, what your acts are doing. And we see the, the revelation of another altar or another body or an altar in human form when Yesu or the Jesus comes back because he comes back as a living testament, as a living altar. Right? And then we see again Simao Choko coming back, right, to bring to the people. What do altars do? The altars are supposed to bring us closer to the Most High. There is a, that's a place of sacrifice. So altars have to go hand in hand with sacrifice. You look at Yesu, he was sacrificed. You look at Simao Toko, they did that to him. So you can see like a signature of these things in both the physical state, the stone state, and also the physical state of the human state. And, and there's a lot of corruption with this new age uh, they're teaching and whatnot. They're corrupting the food. They're corrupting the scripture, you know? And that's why Daniel said he will not eat the king's food because he knew it's going to disrupt his altar. It's going to disrupt his state, right? And that's why Joseph took off because he knew it was an altar. He's, he's, he was an altar. So, I mean, it, it all kind of revolves back, even the dry bones of Moses. That's why God buried him himself, because he knew the people would look up to him. And Moses was the first living sacrifice that the people knew about. So, again, you're seeing like a, a constant theme that's been repeated, but it's very deep. At the same time, it's been hidden from us for a very long time. Same as this location with all these altars that have been hidden from us, with these fake maps, fake land, fake people, fake food, fake scriptures, fake everything, you know? The fake, even they fake themselves. So now they're being punished and everything is being unearthed so that the cleansing can come up and then now we can see the, the real stuff imagine in Geta. Oh my! Ain't get Blow the horn is on you. <laughs> that was fire. That was fire. Finally, <laughs> alone on the holy mountain. No? Thank you for joining. Thank you for listening. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share if you find this content helpful.